So what's going on with the company, dude? With, um, let me pull this in finance. With, uh, with the, the company, I forget the name of the company you're talking about, but how do I log into this thing, bro? Do I have, is it a password or is it my, my code on my phone? I think you have it on your phone over here. I'll keep buying Bitcoin, dude, right? This is the lowest I bought it, I think, actually, because I bought the last one at like 8,900. Okay, cool. And I've only got, uh, I've only got four or 5,000 of Bitcoin in the Binance account. 4,000. All right, dude. All right, man, we'll get back in the game when you come here, okay? All right, brother. Likewise, likewise, buddy, anytime, man. Look forward to hanging out with you, okay? Cheers, buddy. Bye. See about Bitcoin? I'm buying Bitcoin, man. It's down, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm in on it, baby. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, my buddy's coming over this week, and so he's like all into Bitcoin. He's at like cryptocurrency events every week. Yeah. And so he's kind of guiding me on different positions. There's like 15 different positions he wants me to put my money in. And then there's also a system that we can buy that I, I want to buy into with him. He's got a group of people that are in it and I want to buy into it for 20 Gs because with it, I can actually do arbitrage. So I can see that something's traded on X on this exchange, but it's Y on this other exchange. And through arbitrage of buying, transferring from one exchange to the other, changing my positions, I can actually um, make make money on the spread. Yeah. So, so that's what I want to do. And then, of course, I think Bitcoin's going to go through the roof. I think by the end of the year, from what I've heard from all my friends and from people that I've you know talked to about it, that uh, you know Bitcoin could go to 50, 60 thousand, even 100 thousand. So right now it's at 8,500 bucks. So I'm buying it. That's about what I bought Bitcoin at, yeah. you know. So yeah. I don't, I haven't really lost much money from buying Bitcoin. Yeah. So I, I bought it pretty low throughout the time. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, if it, if it 10x's or you know 20x's, um, uh, let's say say 10x's, I'm in a good spot, right? Yeah. And um, I also own servers, so I own like I put a hundred thousand dollars into servers that mine Bitcoin. So every week I get a check because we, I have the yeah, miners, you know, right. the, I have the, the servers that mine. So I also have that invested in cryptocurrency. So, you know, I'm pretty, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm heavy into cryptocurrency, but I've got some money into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what the hell, man, you know? <laughs> Why not? It's, it's a trend, you know? <laughs> it's a trend. So it's not like I'm, for me, I, I, I have money in investments, I have money saved, I put money in my business, but this is another game for me to play and have a good time. So let it ride, baby, crypto. Crypto, here it comes. Sick. Yeah. This goes for entrepreneurship, relationships, dreams. At the end of the day, we have instincts and we have ideas about things. And we're like, oh, I'm being called to do it. But what's that thing that stops? It's like the shutter that shuts you down. And you're like, oh, I'll do it another day. And the reality is like time is such an interesting thing because how much do we delay getting things done now? When we know we can have the cycle, we can have the conversation, we can have the communication with people right now about this very issue, but we don't, and we delay it. And for the action takers, like even in society today, right? A lot of us are like, okay, two days later, we'll make the decision, and at least we get it done. But other people, like, they never get it done. And so when you think about your dreams, you're an entrepreneur right now, there's an investment you're looking to make right now. Like, for us, it's marketing. We're looking to take marketing to the next level, but I'm taking the actions, right? I'm getting the line of credit that I want to explode my marketing. I'm looking to take my one-man show to the next level, so I'm building the marketing funnel right now. We're shooting the videos. We're creating the team. We're doing the things that need to be done. But at the end of the day, if you don't make the decision on the thing that needs to be done, it never gets done. And when do you make the decision? You make it now. You don't wait for the thing because you wait all of a sudden a new idea, somebody else's idea comes in and that idea is moving you along, pushing you along, pushing you off your purpose. So you gotta be strong in your idea, but you gotta be stronger in your execution. How many great ideas have come through you where you're like, that's a great idea, but you don't do it. So decision making for me is really simple. One, I gotta be on purpose and on dreams. Nothing else matters other than that. If I'm not on purpose and on dreams, I can tell you one thing, all the money in the world is not gonna make me excited about what I'm doing if I'm not on purpose and I'm not on my dreams. So when I look at it from two perspectives, like I got a business, right? 
and I'm on purpose with that because my business is about making a difference in the world. My business is about coaching, speaking, sharing my information, my knowledge, my expertise, getting out to millions of people in a way, but helping people create careers as coaches and experts and speakers that are truly gonna change the world. So when I'm making a decision on that, I'm like, is it online with my, pur my purpose and my business? Yeah, and I do it. So I know if it's in the direction of growth, if it's the direction of my purpose lines, I do it, right? Dreams is another thing, it's a little bit different, right? Because when I look at seven years ago when I started this business, it was a dream. So I had to get into massive action for the dream, right? But later on, now it's like, it's my business, it's my purpose, I'm running it every day, so I gotta make the decisions to continue to grow it. But then you have other dreams, right, that come in, you're like, does it fit in line with my purpose of what I wanna do in life? And here's what I believe. I believe that your vision is one thing. So ultimately you have this massive vision up here and you're like, okay, I'm doing my purpose over here, I dig this. I got some other dreams coming in here that I want. The question is, does it fit into the collective vision? Is your personal life, your professional life, your financial life, is it all aligned, your spiritual life, is it aligned under one vision? And if it is, it's easy to make a decision. But here's the thing, most people, they have no clue or concept of what their vision is. You know, I was sitting here meeting with a guy before, we're sitting down on the board, over here at the board, and I'm like drawing out for him, I'm like, okay, we're talking about mechanics here of like marketing and what I want, but let's get bigger picture of here's the vision, here's the end game. So when you know the end game, it's easy to make a decision. If you know I got my purpose here going on in my business, I got these other dreams over here that I'm dreaming up that I want, the question then becomes, what's the master vision? When you know the master vision and the end game, decisions are easy, but why don't people make decisions? They don't know the end game. So what do people do? They go, this is my thing over here, this is my thing over here, this is my thing over here, and then it's like, I don't have energy to get to all the things. You ever done that before? You're like, oh yeah, but I'm doing this over here, so I don't have time for this thing. But here's the thing, when you have a unified vision, the actions you take here are impacting here. The things I do in my business impact my dreams. The things I do in my dreams are integrated with my business. I'll give you an example, right? So years ago, I was, launched my business, my coaching speaking business, and I'm like, all right, I'm loving this, I'm enjoying it, I'm up there on stage, you know, I'm speaking in front of four or 500 people, I'm like, this is a good gig, but I'm like, something's missing. And the water's coming up on my feet right now, it's getting so damn inspiring, the water's coming up. So I'm like, something's missing, right? And, and I'm waking up in the morning, I'm like, what is, this, what is this thing that I need to fuel me more? And it was creativity, creativity. So when you think about that, it's like, you can be doing the business of things, which sometimes has to do with marketing and sales and finances and all this stuff. But if you don't have the creative aspect inside your business, you don't have the creative aspect and outlet inside your life, then I, I believe it's hard to be fully expressed and fully alive. So here I was waking up in the morning, and I'm like, well, I, I got this, this desire to do something creative, and I had this dream and vision of doing a show, a one-man show. But I'm like, but I got this business. So like, how do I make time for the show when I got this business, right? So it's like conflict. But then I step back and I go, what's the end game? Like, what's the end game for me? And what I realize is like, art and inspiration is so much more important to me because when I'm doing that, my business is that much better. Inspiration and art fuels my business. So when I made the decision, all I had to do was go, what do I want my life to look like in 10 years? And I started to realize that I didn't just want to be running a business 10 years from now, I wanted to be running a life that I dreamt about. And I, I, I brought up all the things that I always dreamt about as a kid, like acting and doing all those things. And I'm like, well, if I all of a sudden do this show and I tell a story of my life and I start getting up there and playing characters, like essentially I'm doing acting. So that dream that I had that I was suppressing, putting down, saying I could never do this thing, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm gonna do this thing and I made a decision. That's the thing, I made a decision. And then I said, well, how did the two connect together? And so I looked at it and I go, well, I've got my business over here, right? And I'm doing marketing and selling and I'm speaking on stages. And I said, well, if I do a, a one-man show, I can do my one-man show at my seminars. So the two fit together. And a lot of people say, well, art and business don't mix. It's kind of like, like, you know, life and business don't mix. That's bullshit. If you want to build a lifestyle and a dream, all of it has to be unified. 
Because if it's not unified, here's what happens. You go, I don't have the energy to do this new thing. But if the new thing, the new dream is connected to the vision of what you want, it's one thing. Then you just have to ask yourself, does this new thing fuel the ultimate vision I have for my life? And if it does, if it fuels your spirituality, your relationships, your business, all the things that are important to you, then at the end of the day, you're like, it's an easy decision. So why aren't peaceful people decisive? Because they're not fucking clear, that's why. They're not clear. And they want to get clear. They want to have conversations about what's my goal. They want to have conversations about the challenge, but nobody's fucking asking them any questions. And that's the reality. How many times, when's the last time somebody sat down with you for an hour and asked you about your vision and your dreams? It just doesn't happen. It doesn't fucking happen. So people run around, they start chasing after the next thing they're reactive to. They go after the job that's secure, and at the end of the day, they're not happy. And it's not that they're not happy because they can't be happy. They're not happy because they're not decisive. They're not decisive because they don't have a vision. They don't have a vision because they don't fucking dream. And that's the problem. That's the problem with what's going on in humanity right now. And I get, yeah, you, you know, you start off on something and why do people stop? It's a whole nother freaking conversation we can get into. But that's another thing we can hit. Why do people stop? Why don't people make decisions? Well, number one, you'll make decisions faster if you know the end game. That's just the bottom line. If you're clear on where you're going, a decision is easy. But then why do people stop? So say you make the decision, you're like, this thing I wanna do and people stop. I'll tell you why people stop, okay? Most of the world out there doesn't want you to succeed. That's the reality. People have other intentions where they come in and they pretend that they want success for you, but they really don't. And you gotta watch out for that shit. You gotta watch out for it. And the other thing is, you know, people sometimes secretly will invalidate your ideas and stuff. You don't want that. You don't want people around you who look at your idea and say, that's not a good idea, right? When somebody says that's not a good idea to you, say, fuck you, right? Because at the end of the day, you don't want people like that. You want people who support the things that you're doing. You want dreamers. There's no vision when there's a naysayer. And that's the reality. There's no vision when there's a naysayer in your life. They'll squash your vision, they'll crush your dreams, they'll destroy everything you stand for. Now that's not to say that you run around and you go, everybody's out to get me, it's not true. There's a lot of amazing people and extraordinary people out in the world who want good things, who want bigger things. So as leaders, our job is to lift them up to bigger things. And you know what? I still believe there's, there's hope for the naysayers at the end of the day. Because the naysayers, they need to be lifted up, but somebody needs to stop them when they start coming out and bashing ideas, bashing art, bashing creativity, bashing dreams. You don't need to be around people like that. So first, make a decision of what your vision and your dream is. Get clear on it. Dream it up. And that's the thing about a vision. It's a, you dream it up. What is a dream? You dream it up. Nobody comes and walks over and they go, here's the dream that you should have today. Nobody does that. Like, you were, you were built as this amazing spiritual being for a reason. And the reason is simple. The reason is you can create whatever the hell you want. But if you sit there and, and every day you wake up and you do the things that are dictated, you do the things that you have to do, you do the things that you think you must do, that's nobody telling you to do that. That's just the choice that you made. How do you become an entrepreneur? You fucking decide, man. You decide on it. Nobody said to me, Ted, let's go become an entrepreneur. No, I was tired of being in corporate America. I was tired of going to a box every day. Tired of being in the space of like creativity was stifled. And I'm not saying all of corporate America is like that because it's not. For me, it wasn't a fit. And that's just the bottom line. It wasn't a fit. But you know what? Who was doing the bitching? I was. I was showing up every day for years bitching about it, complaining. That's my fault. It's my fault that I'm complaining. It's not corporate America's fault, it's my fault for bitching about things. So if I'm bitching about things, then go do something about it. And that's what I finally told myself. I looked back and I said, there was nothing wrong with the company that I was at, I was wrong. That was the problem. I was wrong. I didn't have my focus on what I wanted. I was too scared to go after my dreams. I didn't have a vision of what I wanted. And even when I wrote it down, like we used to do these exercises right in class, right? We do these exercises like, what's your vision for your lifetime? We literally had a course about called Goal Cultivator. It was about your life. And I'd write down my vision and stuff, and guess what? I'd have these dreams of what I wanted, but I wouldn't tell anybody. I'd sit back and I'd write it down. It sounded so good. Or maybe I'd be out at a bar at night, and then I'd have the liquid courage to say it to people. You know those people who dream at night, right? and they do shit during the day, that was me. Shit during the day, right? You have these big dreams, talk a big game, and you look at the results and they're squat. 
You know, I I feel bad for people who live in the, in the dark corners of their room at night with all these dreams and ideas, and they're big talkers during the day, and they do shit. And that's the reality. So you're here watching this because you're not one of those people, right? You're inspired by dreams. You're inspired by people who want to take action on things that actually change the world and make a difference. So what are you going to decide? I'll tell you one thing. I think you should decide to live a dream. I think you should decide to go after the thing that you want. I think you should decide to be open about it and tell people what you want. What's the worst thing that happens? Somebody doesn't agree with you? So what? It's not their dream. You control the things you control. Control them. Make the decision. Make it happen. But keep the end game in mind and keep a win-win game. Keep a game where everybody can win. Keep a game where you're supporting people, you're inspiring people, you're encouraging people. That's what the world needs. See you soon. Next episode.